Only one week late this time, yeah! Getting better at this, I say, after only one time of actually being consistent. Sure. Especially if I'm testing for the other day. Terrible movie, by the way. Don't watch it. Spoiler alert. And in it, there was a scene where the dude puts his hand in this mysterious glowing green goop. And the person that I was with was like, why would you put your hand in something mysterious and you don't even know what it is? My only reaction was, for the love of science. People do weird things for science, for knowledge, for the sake of finding something out. And today, I'm going to go through a few. Number one, Barry Marshall, the person who discovered the cure to stomach ulcers, or more accurately, what caused stomach ulcers. So for a long time, people thought stomach ulcers were physical responses to things like stress, too much acid in your stomach, and eating spicy food. Marshall and partner, whose name I can't remember at this stage, coming about researching, were adamant that it was a bacterial infection or virus namely H. pylori, that's probably pronounced wrong, but you get what I mean. Born and raised in Australia, as ruthless as we are, he consumed a petri dish full of the bacteria he thought would be causing most stomach ulcers. We can actually treat stomach ulcers the way they're supposed to be treated, with love and respect. I'm kidding. With drugs. With all the drugs. Now we know that, so thank you Benny Marshall for drinking a petri dish full of bacteria for us. Number two. This picture has probably been going around for I don't know how long. I know I've seen it. Maybe that's because I follow a lot of science pages on Facebook. Gross. Like, gross. There is a hand covered in mosquitoes and you can just see them all sucking in their blood. And it's gross. But for the love of science, someone was willing to put their arm into a container full of mosquitoes to feed live specimens so that they can continue their research for whatever reason. <sighs> Because why not? It's efficient, it does the job. So props to you, Emily Dennis. But she's not the only one to have endured many, many bites from insects. Regine Grace? Grice? Regine? A biologist from British Columbia, Canada, endured almost 200,000 bed bug bites in the name of science. Number four? Or five? Maybe three? I don't remember anymore. Number something! <laughs> There's a researcher whose name I cannot pronounce, I'll put it down in the description, but he sifted through about 200 pieces of elephant dung, which isn't small. Elephants are big, they poop a lot and in large amounts at one time to see if there are any frogs in them. The guy sifted through 200 pieces of poop for science, which I think is pretty damn cool. But there's things that everyday scientists do now, who work hours and, and try to figure out stats and how to do things. And honestly, I think it's one of the most rewarding experiences ever. And even though I've only done about like three or four field trips that don't really count as real science or real research, I can only say doing field work is one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. And even though that means a day of going out and hanging at the beach concludes with hours and hours sitting in a closed lab inhaling alcohol fumes until 11.30 p.m. going crazy because your results are screwed up and skipping dinner and sleep so that you can fix and make your results occur. Mm. Point being, people do a lot of things for the love of science, for the love of knowledge and for finding out more about life. So yes, this theory gives the satisfaction of saying I know things and I am an expert in my field, so shush. In conclusion, science is cool. Do not underestimate it, because I love it. And yeah, I will see you. Hopefully, if I remain consistent, I will see you next week. And if not, whenever I see you. Bye. There is no particular order in terms of coolness or not. I'm just listing them as they come into my head. Okay, so whatever.